It was in the capital, Colombo, that they both grew up. It's a busy modern city, teeming with traffic and people. Then, as now, there was a huge gulf between rich and poor, between those struggling to make a living and those with a chance to get on. There was a huge uh, underprivileged class of people who were almost on the brink of uh, survival, of starvation even sometimes, and there was the, on the opposite side, there were people who had the advantages of education and good schooling. Colombo's Royal College was where the young Wickramasinghe began his academic career. Modelled on the English public schools, it taught Latin and Greek, along with the sciences which became his life. His old teachers remember him as one of the college's most brilliant pupils, a man who, even when living in Wales, was appointed scientific advisor to the president of Sri Lanka. But just as important as his British-style education was the profound influence of Buddhism, the main religion in Sri Lanka. It's based on a world view very different from that in the West. In uh, Buddhism, there isn't a god as there is in the Judeo-Christian tradition. The universe always existed and nobody knows its beginnings nor its end. So I suppose in that sense it ties in and it's not earth-centered. They think of a huge cosmic picture. So even from that point of view, I think it ties in. The Buddha himself is said to have taught on the site of the great temple of Kelaniya. And 2,000 years ago, scriptures written here describe the universe as Buddhists saw it. There are descriptions of a universe filled with stars and with planets and moons circling around these stars and inhabited planets at a time when all the European philosophies were earth-centered uh, these guys way out in the tropics had a vision of the universe that was completely different um, the earth was not the center of things and life was not centered on the earth growing up in tropical Sri Lanka the sky and the stars were another powerful influence on the future astronomer. Day after day the sun would set precisely at 6.30 in the evening and within minutes the spectacle of the night sky lights up. There are millions and millions of stars that appear so intensely bright and against that backdrop one is almost forced to ask the question where do I fit into this grand scheme of things? That's the question he's pursued for 40 years in his scientific career in Britain. But he has an important friend and ally in Sri Lanka, Arthur C. Clarke, whom he met on a flight to Colombo in the 1960s. Their friendship is based on a shared belief in extraterrestrial life and a common interest in the evidence that man may not be alone in the cosmos. His ideas on life in the universe has always been encouraging to all of us who worked on life in the, in the bigger universe. Because here was a 20th century sort of visionary novelist saying the kind of things that we wanted to say, uh, even without any evidence. After the break, how the evidence of the astronomer from Wales could prove that Arthur C. Clarke's predictions of life in the universe are true. Right, right, right.